Hello again, this is Phil from Dancing Dragon Games, and this is another tutorial video for Symphony of War, the Nephilim Saga. Today we're going to talk about the Magician Archetype in the Class Showcase series. If you are here, thank you once again uh, for our wishlisters, Discord members, and followers. Uh, we really love you, we really appreciate having you here, hearing your feedback, and helping us get to the finish line with this game's development. So the Magician Archetype, uh, there's a couple of things to talk about here. Their first turn is going to be a charge up. Uh, so uh, you can you can actually bypass that with technology, and I'll show you a couple of technologies here that are relevant. Uh, with this technology here, a Magician's Initiative, that gets rid of that charge up. Uh, so the other technology I want to talk about is Mage Regiments. Um, all Magicians actually are of the slow movement type, uh, but this technology makes them normal. So if you have like an entire squad of Magicians, they'll be slow movement type on the map which is kind of bad, but that technology gets rid of that penalization. So let's go into the different classes that they can be. So the Medic can become a Magician, I mean Offensive um, Mage. Uh, so this is a, going to be a single target uh, magic attack that has a chance to stun or daze. Stun it makes you completely not act at all for the rest of that combat. And oh, for, the, what, for the rest of that turn, I should say. Um, and so the daze it's, it's a higher chance to hit the daze, uh, but the daze will do less damage um, on counterattack. So if you're dazed, your counterattack is going to be like half attack power. So either one is really nice to land. Stun is better to land, but... Um, so the Siren... Gotta get enough magic to upgrade here. Ugh, okay, we needed 50 magic. So the Sorceress! There's a reason you need a lot of magic to become a Sorceress, because holy mackerel... Um, they actually have a huge AOE effect to their to their magic attack, uh, which does the same thing as a siren. It inflicts stun or daze, same chance, but the amount of troops that you hit is just massive. Sometimes you're hitting the entire enemy squad with this. So if you can imagine, you get both of those technologies, the turn one magic and also the you know mage regiments, and then you have these sorceresses, they can just stun the entire enemy. Um, and they just can't counterattack, so it's almost the same as getting an ambush off. Um, in addition to that, it does damage, so and pretty good damage too, since it's magic. It'll just completely bypass armor. The fighter and archer also have the ability to upgrade to mage classes, so we're going to get his magic up to 10, <laughs> because the fighter doesn't get very good magic growth, so... Um, it's kind of hard sometimes to become an apprentice, but the payoff is very good. As you can see, the armor goes to zero. All uh, of these mages have zero armor uh, to pay for kind of the the offensive power that they have. Um, and obviously that's a big downgrade from being a heavy troop uh, in terms of your tankiness, so you're super squishy. But the apprentice doesn't have a stun that the siren has, but it's, it's a little bit better damage. Uh, so he does a lot of damage um, with his magic attack. Again, he does spend one turn... Um, charging attack unless you have that, that technology. Um, I'm going to say that the Apprentice is the number one squishiest unit in the game, except maybe the Medic. The Medic and the Apprentice are both pretty squishy. <clears throat> so make sure they don't get attacked, really, by anybody. So let's upgrade the Apprentice. Even their upgrades are pretty squishy. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Holy mackerel! <laughs> I did, I didn't even notice that I didn't have the magic stat uh, to to get fully upgraded. Okay, here we go. Ready for the tier three classes? So we've got um, the fire mage, the ice mage, and the lightning mage. Um, you know, obviously they're going to function very similar to each other. But it's just their attack types are very different. In terms of being squishy, yeah, you don't really get any more tankiness. They're just as squishy as the Apprentice, uh, but their magic stat and skill go up, um, depending on which one of these. Uh, sometimes the magic stat goes up quite a bit. And so the biggest difference is the type of attack they do. So the Fire Mage, it does the most damage, but doesn't have any status effects. But that's fine. The, the Fire Mage will hit in a row. So just like the Zweihander does with his weapon attack, but these, are, it's not actually splash damage. It's just literally all three spots in that same row will get hit by the same damage. So ba 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 boom And it's it's pretty awesome when that happens. If there's all three, like, armored guys in a row, well, guess what? Now you're melted by the Fire Mage. So 
that's the power of him. The Ice Mage, not as much attack power in terms of his his spell as the Fire Mage, but it does hit a different, it hits a cross-shaped AoE, which is the same area of effect as the Sorceress has, uh, but this guy will inflict a slow. And slow, and it's a very, it's almost a guaranteed chance to land. The slow will um, really, really reduce the skill rating of the enemy, and that can be really nice because it, their counterattack will miss you or glance and blow you, which means you're reducing the attack power basically of the enemy by a huge margin. So not as much offense, but this can be potentially really good for survival because you really reduce the enemy's skill level um, to actually be able to hit you. The Lightning Mage um, has a Kamehameha. We'll watch him do it in here in a sec. And boom! And so um, he hits a column. He pierces the whole column. And again, it's not even a splash attack. It's all three uh, in that column had the same damage done. And so, you know, if you've got a deep squad, you know, so the Fire Mage hits the row. <coughs> and the Lightning Mage focuses on piercing through. Uh, so this guy is really good at taking out enemy healers, enemy archers, basically backliners, uh, as he sees fit. There is also a dark mage in this game that the player does not have access to for narrative reasons. Um, he is a he, he does two magic attacks in the same turn, as opposed to one for all of these guys the player can do. So you'll see the enemy using them a lot. Um, they are absolutely... Uh, powerful like they're they're dangerous and their uh, attacks actually will inflict stun or daze on you just like the sorceress does so you know try not to take those guys lightly okay and that should just about do it for our mage and our magician archetype thank you again for watching and stay tuned for more tutorial videos have a great day